Okay, I don't think we really need to measure this. I'll snap it and then I'll check it. Yeah, it's pretty tight. It looks like one and three quarters. All right, here we are at the moment of truth. I have the center line of the roof snapped. I have my guides for the two sides there. I have my cant strip to make sure that the first row of slates is tipped up a little bit. And I put on these uh, just scrap two by six so that the ladder won't lean on the edge of the slates. And obviously that's gonna help when I'm installing the first row of slates too, right? We're gonna look at these pretty careful as we go. Like this might cause a problem. Especially on this first row of slates, I want everything to be pretty pretty uniform. So the first two slates are lining up at the uh, center right here. And then I have a string here, which isn't very tight, but it doesn't really matter. It's just something I can sight down this way to make sure I get the overhang. These aren't really the same thickness. It's pretty close, but I'm just gonna, especially for the first couple here, I just wanna get slates that match really well. Because remember, the next row slate is gonna lay right flat on top of this and match at the edge. So if there's any major inconsistency in thickness, that's gonna screw things up. Looks good. So just to be cautious, I'm not gonna drive these nails yet. I think I just left a high spot on the can't strip here. Uneven wood, uneven slate. Oh yeah, that's much better. You can see this slate, I've, I've hung it and removed it a couple of times for some reason. Um, but you know, it's still solid, so that's gonna be a problem. What I could do is uh, put it on this side, which it matches up real good right here. I'll put a little bit thicker slate on that end, and then I'm gonna test it. And if it looks good, you know. So this is nice and flat. And it looks just great. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue this process. Oh, I didn't catch that. That is not gonna work. This actually already has a high spot here. So it's either gonna be that's gonna be high or this is gonna be very high. Maybe it's the slate. Maybe it's the wood. You can't pry against the slate like I would have to right here. And you'll notice that, well, you can catch me if I don't do it and let me know. But if I pick up a slate, I should always ring test it like that to make sure it, it rings and doesn't sound dull. This hole here is right over the, the crack in the roof. As you can see, I punched this one backwards pop out another hole right here. This slate's a little poorly matched, but part of it is because it's got a, a rock to it. It's rocking on this corner, so I'm just actually gonna bust that corner off. better. Still rocking a little on this corner right here. And no, it doesn't matter for like leakage and stuff if this corner is missing. Yeah, that's better. It's a little gappy. I think we'll save that one for somewhere else. Probably down at that and I think the slates are thicker down there. That's perfect right there. Check out the uh, contorted Trichocereus panachoi. Isn't that cool? It grew a lot this year. I cut this a little too big, just slightly. I shouldn't have tried to get it to such tight tolerance. I'm just gonna trim this off with the, I'm just gonna use this. I was gonna get like maybe a brick up here or something, but 
You know what? It's just another thing to trip over. Dangerous, you know, having a bunch of stuff laying around the roof while you're up here. This sounds a little funny. Look at this. And it goes all the way to here. No. The reason I hit it is because I don't want to find it later and try to use it again. If you want to uh, throw a slate off the roof without breaking it, throw it on its edge. I'm not saying it won't break, it's much less likely to break. Let's do that again. I'm out of reasons not to drive these nails home. Everything's uh, set up, it looks really good. You want the slates to be a little bit loose. So just, you know, don't drive them tight. See that? Okay, the first uh, upside down course is laid here for the base and everything looks pretty good. Good enough anyway, this nail looks a little high. So the next course is these guys, they're all exactly the same width. All the slates on the roof are the same width, except for, you know, at the corners, because otherwise the pattern won't maintain as you go up. So this is a great example of a slate where it has a big old lump, but it doesn't matter because this is the, sh the face that shows. So nothing's gonna be touching that. So it's perfectly fine. I'm gonna start with the uh, thickest slates here and sort them out and start with those in the middle and then get thinner towards the outsides because you have to do something. I mean, I have a lot of different thicknesses of slates here, and you can't just mix them up. And if I'm going to put the thicker ones anywhere, I'd rather they were in the center of the roof, just kind of for looks, I guess. There's a thick slate. Thick. Nice. It's going to look good. Now, I do want to be careful when I'm laying these not to put, like, you know, four black ones in a row or something. Most of the slates are more of a greenish or bluish color, and... It does take, you know, it's easy to make a mistake like that. Usually it won't happen if you just don't think about it, but once in a while it will happen and it'll look kind of funny. So I do want to keep an eye on that as I go. Here's another thick slate. So what I'll do is I'll go along and lay all these out. And uh, again, just to make sure that everything is the way I want it. Yeah, so that's centered right there. It's looking like I can start nailing these. I spent probably 45 minutes to an hour looking for and cutting new slates for this. I've used up a lot of the best slates in this lot. A lot of them are warped or have big lumps and stuff or they're super thick or just weird stuff. So, you know, later I can build a roof with all of that stuff that's actually gonna be great and it'll look really good, but it'll be in a different style and it'll be really, you know, loose and probably have a bunch of big gaps, but it'll be consistently like that. So it'll just look really rustic and cool. But on this roof, I have to be pretty selective. It's pretty consistently five and three quarters. Looks like that's the number I went with. This slate is rocking a little bit. That could cause a problem when the top slates go down. It's actually because of the decking here. So let's... Um... Yeah, that helped quite a bit. So now it's high right here. We can just nibble that corner right off. Probably doesn't matter, like, but I don't find out until I put the next slate on, so I'd rather nibble away at this a little bit right now. Then have to uh, grind away with a diamond grinder on the next slate or something you know, more involved like that. Okay, that was nailed a little tight, but there's nothing I can do about it now. But you want them to, to wobble a little bit. Things move around on the roof and expand and shrink. It's gonna put a lot of pressure on these nail holes if they're tight. Plus, when you lay more slates, like everything can kind of adjust to each other if it's a little bit loose. When you first start nailing these things, it's super nerve-wracking, like you're gonna hit the slate for sure, right, and break it. It happens, but it's not that common. It 
So it's occasionally handy to have a drill and a countersink for situations like this. So even if I could punch this slate, which it's a little bit small, so it, that just means it's gonna be a little more fragile, there's a slate underneath it that also I have to go through that. I can just line everything up So this is gonna trash your countersink and your drill bit, but I've used this one a lot on this whole roof and another roof, and it actually is still working. It's just really dull. So I have one more of these to put on the other side, and then the first, you know, starter courses are done, and I can start laying the uh, first course of patterned slates. Okay, we're ready to start throwing down the first row of pattern slates. I'm gonna do the same thing of sorting thick to thin. That one tapers off from thick to thin, so that'll be sort of a transition. A lot of these are pretty thick, which is fine. I could see some of them are gonna be rejects. You know, look at how wobbly this is already. Some of these are probably left over from other sides of the roof. Like, look at this one. It's got this huge curve here. Same with this one. You see how, how raised this is? So I'm gonna have to grind all this down with a diamond grinder or something to make that work. Goes in the possible reject pile. This one's very thin, so we'll put that out toward the edge. This one's medium. Maybe put it on the other side of that one. This one's thin. We'll put it on the very end of that. Wait, what's that? Oh, I like that one. Let's put this one here. And also gonna lay out a bunch of these, maybe even all of them. See how they're working. So this is a kind of a big gap right there, but you can see it's rocking on this corner, so we could probably just chip off that corner. I don't like the looks of this slate. It has tons of this iron pyrite in it, which apparently can cause failure. The slate has a lot of iron pyrite in it, but see, this one goes all the way through. If we don't have to use it, I'd rather not. Now this one, it doesn't look like the point is lined up really, but it could have just broken off. So what I want to do is I'll just lay the next slate and it's a little off too. So I'm going to scoot this slate over, this slate over slightly and just leave a gap here. And chances are that one of these slates is the wrong size or these uh, slates down here are a little funky. Not really a problem to leave a little bit of a gap here. I'm confident enough in this layout to start nailing five and three quarters and if the point looks like it's broken i'll kind of compensate a little bit and just shift stuff around but if it looks okay to me then it then it's okay i want them, the holes about two inches below where they are now Okay, that's the wobbly one, so we want to cut this corner off. And it's so thick that I think I'm gonna take it down and cut it. So you can see this is still wobbling. The slate is really warped, it's cupped like this. So basically this is gonna have a quarter inch gap under it if I use it, and I don't want that, so I'm not gonna use it. All right, let's nail them. This slate's wobbly on that corner, so we're gonna do away with that corner. Better. Let's just take a little bit of that off. Oh, much better. I'm just gonna nail these two down and call it a day. So now if you look at the holes, they're just above these slates by like a half inch or so. They don't have to be that close, but you know, roughly that's kind of what we're shooting for is just above the previous row. So take a look here. Um, this slate is cracked. I thought I tested this. Oh, I probably cracked it here. So, well, there goes, a, there goes a slate. It happens. I did notice that I've nailed this a little bit tight, so I probably just uh, hit it a little bit. 
that may come in handy for doing the far corner. Okay, well, you know, it doesn't look like much, but this is the most persnickety part of the job. And it just takes a long time to get these first courses laid out really well. So it should proceed reasonably fast now since I have most of the slates cut. But as you can see, there's just a lot of dicking around with uh, messed up slates and going to look for stuff. And when I go to look for, you know, small pieces for corners, I don't like to waste slate. So I look through all the broken piles and it takes a while to find what I need. That saves a lot of slate versus just grabbing a perfectly good large slate and chopping off a corner to use. All right, next day, we're getting a late start here, but we're back on the roof. There's just so many things to keep me busy besides this. Cleaning out the freezer so I can freeze some meat. So first order of business today is to finish this row of slates. So it looks like we need to cut a few more. Two big slates, and then we're gonna need uh, something to finish out the corner there. I can't just grab a slate. I'm gonna have to go dig through the piles. You can see already it's getting a little awkward to get up on the roof and not step on the slates. So the other thing I'll be doing today is going to get the roof jacks, start putting up a, some platform to work off of. I forgot about these slates I brought over here to take a picture of. So there's one right there. Beautiful. Oh, that's a beauty there. It's a pileated woodpecker. Now we're getting into some better slates. Hey, people keep asking me about the bees. Uh, they were doing pretty good, but a few days ago they got raided. If the hive gets too weak, like other bees will come and raid the hive. There were yellow jackets and for like three days they just got completely raided. So they're probably out of honey and they're probably going to die this winter. I almost broke in there when it first started and just took all the honey out for myself, <laughs> but I was kind of busy and that would have been the thing to do is just instead of letting all the other bees get it, I, I would get it. Okay, now we're getting into a bunch of good slates. Obviously that first part was a lot of uh, crappy slates. These look great here. So when you're cutting these patterns, um, it kind of helps to just get rid of the, the bulk here and then just kind of come in here and trim this because it's a lot easier to cut off small amounts like that. So, so you just come in with the curved part of the blade and just sort of slowly nibble that stuff off. Look closely at this nail right here. It's really far from the bottom of that, you know, divot in the slate. But that doesn't matter. It's it's down below the surface of the slate, and that's all that matters. You're really just kind of hanging the slate uh, from the roof by the nail. So you can see this whole slate is really loose, but as long as uh, these are down low, I mean, they're not all going to be completely flush or completely below, but that's the idea. So at the end of the last video, I broke this slate. I think I hit it with a hammer or something. And uh, that's going to come in handy to fill in this space. Three layers of slate. I'm going to snap some chalk lines up the deck here before I start working again. It's already getting kind of hard to, to get up here onto the roof. So once I have another row of slates, it's going to get really hard to get up there without stepping on the slates, which you can't really do. You can maybe get away with uh, stepping on the top edge a little or something, but basically you can't walk on the slates. So I'm going to roof up as far as I can, which is probably up to about here. And then I'll put in some uh, roof jacks and put up a scaffold right about, yeah, right about up in here somewhere. And that may allow me to finish the roof without getting any more roof jacks, but I have four roof jacks already. So that's, that's a good chance that's going to be enough. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to snap the chalk lines now, and the chalk lines are every five and three quarters inches, which is equivalent to the difference between the bottom of this, the top of this slate, and the top of the next slate. It's also the amount that the tiles are exposed. So each tile has five and three quarters inches of the bottom half exposed. So, in other words, like if the 
the end of this next tile is going to be right here. Then if you go down here and draw a line, it's five and three quarters inches. So that allows me to just go up the deck and snap a line every five and three quarters inches as long as everything's staying symmetrical this way, which we can check. But you can see this black line that I already snapped is pretty parallel with the decking, so that's probably good. By the way, the decking for this is 100% uh, salvage two by six, so you can see there's odd stuff in here. There's fur, there's redwood, I think there's even some hemlock, there's a few pieces of pressure treated. Just whatever accumulated around the place, I didn't have to buy anything or go even look for anything. Even though some of the wood's a little funky, I mean, it's just a bomber deck because it's all two by six. So let's snap some lines. So I've snapped uh, three lines, one, two, three, and now I wanna check to make sure I'm staying pretty parallel even though the, it looks good with the decking and everything. But I'm gonna measure from this line, which is the center line, out about 18 inches. Let's go with 20 inches on both sides. And now I'm gonna measure from the top center. It's like 52 and an eighth. Dude, 52 and an eighth. Well, that's great. That's what I wanted to see. So I'm just gonna keep going up the roof and snap all these lines. These are old plaster samples. I would guess that these are probably 10 years old and uh, exposed to the weather. This is clay, sand, and shredded straw. Uh, local clay here from the land. Pretty durable, actually. This is only about three quarters of an inch thick and it's actually weathered very well. You can see on the bottom here, kind of flexible. You can see, and this isn't wet, this is dry, but there's a surprising amount of flexibility to it. And then this stuff is like different experiments with like lime wash, uh, lime with pigments. This is um, blood and lime right here, this pink. It's uh, this Chinese paint that's basically like it's kind of like blood glue, similar to cheese glue, but it's blood and lime. But a lot of that paint stuff is washed off, but the plaster is still here because the plaster just wears away like a little, you know, a few grains at a time. Let's get these slates up on the roof and see if we can actually get some slates installed today. Start in the center and work out to keep things symmetrical. You can see I want this point lined up just right there. And then I'm gonna check just about perfect. And we're gonna scoot this sleigh down just to that line. You can see I punched this sleigh a little bit too hard. It's hard to know how hard to hit it. Um, you know, some of the thick slates you have to hit pretty hard. Like this one seems pretty hard. <clears throat> and it'll kind of blow a big chunk out here, but that's okay. See, that, that side of the slate was thinner, so I didn't have to hit it as hard. I pretty much want to go with the points lined up here, but this one's a little off. There's kind of a gap over here. It could be that the point is off. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take the next slate and lay it out and see what it looks like. And that looks good there, and this looks good there with that gap. So I'm just going with the point, you know? Because if these points don't line up with these cracks, the roof, it just doesn't look right. That looks like it'll work. And uh, a few of these slates are a little bit short, like this one looks like it's probably a little bit short. So I'm gonna, you know, eyeball this and make this look good rather than just arbitrarily go by this line. So we can make some progress here now that that first course is done. This slate is a little bit soft. I can hear it. You can feel it too. It feels a little chalky. I think it's okay. It also doesn't ring as much because it's not as hard. I don't think it's cracked though. Um, this, this slate is a mixed lot. I'll tell you the story about this slate and how I got it and some cautions. See, this sounds harder. 
But once in a while you'll get one that just, you can really tell it's much harder. And I assume those are a lot more durable. Okay, I don't see any reason not to drive these nails and move the ladder. Oh my God. I just remembered that uh, beer exists. You know, you have those moments, like Homer Simpson moments, where you're like, beer.